Great ideas can come from anyone, anywhere in the world. And today's speaker agrees. Nilofar Merchant is a business strategist and technology expert who's worked with innovative companies like Apple and IBM. Through her 25-year career, she's found that the way ideas spread in an organization often depends on where power and value reside. But she thinks that the best ideas we've never even heard of can finally emerge when we stop trying to do it alone and find others who support us. There is nothing more valuable on earth than an original idea. Here we are, gathered together, where the entire premise of our convening is to celebrate ideas worth spreading. Brilliant ideas, they light up a room. They light us up. Ideas are what rupture the status quo and brighten the future. Some ideas are heard, most are not. Sometimes it's engineering ignoring the designers or marketing ignoring sales because every organization has a group that's deemed less worthy of being heard. Young people are dismissed as inexperienced and older people as out of touch. Almost always commonly marginalized people, for example, the disabled or people of color, had their ideas marginalized too. At most tables, the person who's heard, you'll recognize these, the one with the fanciest title, even if their ideas are last year's reruns, or the loudest and most alpha of leaders denying the value of the quiet. When you have power, it means that early, that idea gets early encouragement. So your boss, your friends, whoever hear you, and they say something like, that's so original. They back you and they shape it so that idea gets developed enough to become a new reality. Those who are valued get to create value. And that leads to more results and more respect and more status. Loop to loop, up and up they go. The reverse trajectory is also true. Those who have low power get ignored or silenced. And then even if the same words are used, so like, that's so original. The tone says they didn't actually hear you or it. We're not seeing all ideas. So what do we do about it? Let's go to solutions. Let's talk about what not to do. Don't go in alone. Here's why. Rosabeth Moss Cantor of Harvard Business School studied onlys. So let's say the first woman leader in an organization, or let's say the only black engineer. And she found three things constrain their ideas. One, they feel watched, so they're super self-conscious. Try doing work that way. Two, they are excluded from all those social settings where trust and all that stuff happens, where you know, work actually happens. Third, they feel extreme pressure to conform to the existing norms. So the thing is, most of us, when we're that only or first, it's not enough. We'll never break the barrier because we'll actually feel so much pressure to conform. Not because we're weak, but because we're human. We don't conform because we want to, but because we have to. Human beings are social beings. It is not about standing out in a crowd. It is about finding your crowd. As you find your people, you get two things. First, you get the power to incubate your idea, and second, you can grow it to be powerful enough to dent the world. So let's talk about incubation first. A woman had stood up after I'd given a talk a couple years ago, and she shared how she had just finished helping her husband accomplish his greatest dream, by getting his music to the moon, literally on a NASA shuttle. And then she wanted his help with her big idea. So she was asking, what could I change to make that happen? And I said to her, if the people around you don't support your ideas, maybe even shut them down altogether, don't change who you are, change who you're with. Second reason to find your people, scale. Say you have a status quo changing idea. It's possible you could bend the will of the powers that be to you. 
it's just as likely that the status quo will want to squash, maybe even suffocate that lovely new idea. And now you can actually organize a crew based on what matters to you and what matters to them based on their onlyness and actually figure out how to scale that idea. So as you find your purpose, you find your people. As you find your people, you find your power. These social, relational, human constructs, what I've just described, is what allows that individuality that we all have to actually be expressed in the world today as game-changing and power-changing. We often describe power as if it's, you know, personal. So we'll say, he or she has power. Power is not simply personal. Power is profoundly social. And it's this insight that can tell us what to do next. How do we enable the onlyness of each of us to come out? We create those spaces, those social constructs that lets people, including yourself, to contribute from that spot in the world in which only they stand. That's how original ideas get their due. Each of us, each of you, stand in a spot in the world only one stands in. And from that spot, your history, your experience, your visions, your hopes, everything that is you informs that perspective. It is that power of place, sort of like this big red circle, that follows you around, that is yours. Distinctly one's own, the source of ideas, compared to no one.